When it comes to Arizona's economy, the old norm was rapid job growth at low pay, and the new normal is modest job growth at modest pay. What's the future? Business officials say many more high quality jobs at high pay. I call it the new normal because we are at different times right now. I mean, if you look at the early part of the decade, population was growing like anything in Arizona. Our goals, uh, we have very aggressive goals um, that we would like to, to accomplish over the five years. Um, 75,000 quality jobs over a five year period. The state's job market moving in the right direction, albeit slowly. It's Arizona Week. Production of Arizona Week is made possible in parts by a grant from the Stonewall Foundation and by the members of Arizona Public Media. Thank you for your continued support. Once again, your moderator, Michael Chiha. Arizona's economy was so robust just six years ago that job growth hit nearly 6%. Then came the recession and a long, slow recovery. Now we'll see the job market expand at an average of 2% in each of the next two years. But there are positive signs on the horizon. Here's the big picture, starting with the annual jobs forecast from economist Aruna Murthy, director of the State Office of Employment Statistics. You've given your uh, annual jobs forecast this week for Arizona, and you're talking about slow growth in the state. Would you expand on that a little bit? Um, our Year-end ended at about 2% growth uh, for the entire 2012. We forecast a slightly uh, slower growth rate of 1.9% for 2013 and about 2.1% for 2014. And those are, that's growth in the number of jobs in the state, right? That's a growth rate in terms of number of jobs in the state, that's right. And what is driving that slight slowdown? There were two things that happened in the beginning of the year. Uh, one was the uh, federal uh, budget cuts, which are also called the sequestration, and the other thing uh, that happened is the increase in payroll taxes. The payroll taxes got effective as of the beginning of this year, whereas the sequestration cuts came about as of March. And those things both are having impacts on the job market because they're driving specific sectors within the market, is that correct? Yes, there was a considerable reduction in spending at the federal level which causes the effects to be trickled down across the various states, including Arizona. And uh, Arizona is heavily dependent on the military sector. Uh, the cuts were both in military and non-military spending. So we, as a result of those cuts, we are expected to see some slowdown in the economy. Let's talk about where some of the growth in jobs will be in Arizona. First of all, geographically, your forecast shows that the Phoenix metro area will continue to lead the way. That's right. Uh, Phoenix uh, has always been, uh, in, when, in a when it's growing, its growth has always been more in Phoenix. It's also a function of how many jobs are there. We have about 70% of the state's jobs in the Phoenix metropolitan area. And a lot, it also has many type, uh, in terms of sectors, it has a far more diversified economy than maybe in Tucson. Uh, we are seeing uh, la higher growth in the Phoenix area, larger than the state average, 2.3% uh, in 2013 and about 2.4% in 2014, uh, compared to Tucson, where uh, the rate has slowed down some, even though in terms of job numbers, that hasn't been a big impact per se, but the rate itself uh, looks like a little steeper drop than the jobs. It's about 0.8% from 1.5% in 2012, and it's about 1.1% in 2014. For Tucson? For Tucson. Now let's talk about it by, by job sector. Let's start with leisure and hospitality, which is always a big sector for Arizona. What do you see happening there? The leisure and hospitality sector will continue to grow in Arizona. Uh, where we see the growth happening is in food services and drinking places sector. And, uh, you know, it. It will continue to grow. I mean, if some of the uh, federal parks close down, for example, uh, maybe fewer people will be employed in some sectors, but we still have a large number of winter visitors, and so it will continue to grow, though the rate of growth has slowed down a little bit. And then another very important sector for Arizona is professional and business uh, services. What do we see there? In uh, professional and business services, we are seeing gains in employment services. 
Uh, we are seeing gains in business support services and services to building and dwelling. When you come to uh, employment services, these are uh, the temp agencies. Wherever you know we need jobs across the state, and employment services is a sector where it hires uh, people on a temporary basis. So we will continue to see that. We'll continue to see uh, various business support services. So PBS sector will again continue to grow, but the rate of growth has been slowing down. And because we're a consumer-driven society, retail is a very important sector. It's part of a bigger sector, but it's the, the dominant part of that sector. Tell us what's going on in employment there. Uh, in the retail sector, the trends suggest that there has been a slow, considerable slowdown. Uh, as of last month, I mean, over the year rate was only about 0.2%. We are barely above the 0% growth rate, which means positive net jobs. Uh, and in that particular sector, we are seeing through time a decline. And it worries me considering these cuts when payroll taxes go up and you have less money to spend overall. That's one sector where you'll spend less. You know, you could have to eat and, you know, if you have to not go and spend, uh, you know, on maybe clothing or other uh, non-essentials, you know, retail gets affected by that a lot. And then one other really important sector for Arizona, one that got hit the hardest in the recession, construction. What do you see going on there? We have very good growth rates for construction. It's about 10.5% uh, growth in construction and about 12,000 plus jobs, 12,200 jobs in construction. So that's a decent growth rate when, when it comes to construction. Um, again, you know, construction is gradually gaining. You know, we are not seeing a steep gain by any means uh, in the state overall. You called these numbers perhaps the new normal. Is that what we're seeing now? Do we have to adjust our thinking that this is the growth rate we're going to be seeing going forward? I call it the new normal because we are at different times right now. I mean, if you look at the early part of the decade, population was growing like anything in Arizona. Our rates were close to 2.8% uh, growth rate, but now the population that we see growing, or at least our, our estimates of forecast is 1.1 you know, and 1.3 for the next two years. So that's not anywhere close to where we were seeing the population grow. So all the industries that it serves, you know, uh, the population is dependent on various types of industries when it moves to Arizona. And all those industries tend to grow when people come in. So while we are seeing growth, we are not seeing growth where, uh, you know, uh, we saw in early part of the decade where a lot of the, like for example, the healthcare industry was growing um, very steeply and now it's plateaued out because we are not seeing that kind of an increase in population. Two years ago, state political and business leaders committed to changing Arizona's approach to economic development and job creation. From that came the public-private Arizona Commerce Authority and an aggressive agenda to attract new business. Authority President and CEO Sandra Watson tells us how it's going. The business of the Commerce Authority is to attract businesses. How do you go about that? Well, um, well, we do several things um, at the Arizona Commerce Authority. We attract businesses to the state of Arizona. We also work with existing businesses to help them expand their operations. And then we work with innovators and entrepreneurs to enhance opportunities to commercialize technology. As it relates to attraction, we have a team of experts on staff that work uh, directly with businesses. We work with site selection consultants. We work with business decision makers all over the country who are looking at expanding uh, operations uh perhaps into Arizona, we're hoping into Arizona. Um, in addition to that, we also work with international companies who are looking for a U.S. President, presence. We have two offices set up in California that also help with our attraction efforts. We've got one in Santa Monica. We've got another office in San Jose. What are some of the key tactics you use? Obviously, having those offices in California is one of them because California has lots and lots of businesses maybe looking for better situations, but what else do you do? 
Well, we aggressively market the state's value proposition for businesses who are looking to expand their operations, whether they're here in Arizona or businesses from outside of the state. So we attend tra trade shows. We have a very uh, aggressive branding campaign that we just launched for the state of Arizona. Very, very effective. We've launched it in California, here in Arizona. We're looking at other regional markets, and so it's print, TV, um, radio, um, digital, so we've got an aggressive effort to market the, the strength of Arizona and the value proposition that Arizona offers to businesses. High tech is one of the areas that is, the fo is a focus of the Commerce Authority. How do you go about recruitment in that realm? Well, our focus on um, high-tech industries is very, very specific. We uh, look at opportunities to enhance what Arizona businesses are already doing. So we are particularly strong in aerospace and defense in the state of Arizona, as well as semiconductors and electronics. We are nationally ranked um, in A&D. We're ranked number uh, four, or we're ranked number five in A&D concentration in employment and ranked number four in semiconductors. So from that perspective, we look at where are our assets and how do we enhance those assets. We look for firms that complement the existing firms in our state. So we look to California, we look all over the country at those high value industries and high value firms and we, we knock on doors. We talk to business decision makers, we share with them the value uh, proposition for Arizona, um, the in the uh, business climate, the low cost of uh, operating here in our state, the highly talented workforce that we have, and the exceptional quality of life. What kind of goals do you set in terms of uh, business recruitment? Do you set those goals by numbers of businesses, numbers of jobs, quality of jobs based on pay? How does that work? Our focus, and we have a five-year business plan that was established when we were created, and our focus is on job creation. So our goals, uh, we have very aggressive goals um, that we would like to, to accomplish over the five years, um, 75,000 quality jobs over a five-year period. Two-thirds of those jobs are intended to be in the uh, high-quality jobs, um, mostly in the tech uh, sectors. And so as it relates to the full 75,000 jobs, we're looking at a very aggressive schedule and working with companies who are looking to enhance and, and create high value jobs for Arizonans. Two years in, it's been almost two years since the Commerce Authority was formed. Uh, where are you in moving toward that goal of 75,000? Right. That goal was set up after the first year of our, our operations. So we are in our, uh, we're almost completing our second year as an organization, but really uh, one year in executing against the business plan. We are currently at um, just over 10,000 jobs in our first year. We still have a few months left in this, in this quarter. Um, and at the end of the fiscal year. So we feel very optimistic in uh, the work that our team has done here, led by the governor. Um, the, uh, the governor and the legislature have put in place very aggressive, competitive policies to allow us to, um, to speak with businesses and encourage businesses to locate their operations here in our state. Um, so with, with the tools that we have, as well as the team that we have, we feel that we're on track. The state jobs forecast for the next year or two, I wouldn't call it soft, but it's not the numbers that we saw before the recession. Will the work of the Commerce Authority help us return to that level of success in the state, or do we have a patch to get through here first? Well, we're, we're very aggressive in our approach, and so we hope that with the work that we're doing and the work that we're doing with our partners all over the state, we work with our regional economic development partners, our local partners, the chambers, um, the universities, a whole host of partners in this area that we're hoping to aggressively attract businesses and help existing businesses expand so that we exceed those numbers and those goals. So we're very optimistic about where we are today. The pipeline um, of companies uh, that we're working with right now is very promising. We're seeing companies from California, we're seeing companies from all over the state. We've got some very good international opportunities as well. Just uh, a few months ago, we were able to attract a Dutch company, Stealth Software, 
um, that located 200 jobs here in the state. GM just announced uh, 1,000 jobs in our state. We also just finished an announcement with GoDaddy, who has um, also announced 300 jobs. Those are really very recent announcements. We've got Intel, who has announced 300 new top researchers in our state. And so there's significant things happening in our state, and we feel that um, our focus is to push those, those limits and to ensure that we're aggressively uh, working on the job creation uh, issue. The Commerce Authority has $30 million of taxpayer money to help attract businesses and a toolbox filled with other incentives, including tax credits, breaks on state regulations, and jobs training programs. We asked Sandra Watson how the authority is using those tools to build the economy and create jobs. One of the things in the competitiveness package that helped form the Commerce Authority were incentives to businesses, tax credits and, and credits toward capital investments and the like. How are those going and what kind of uh, money from out of taxpayers' pockets is the Commerce Authority spending? Well, we have a fiduciary responsibility to manage those programs. Uh, we have several programs that were, as you mentioned, uh, part of the competitiveness package that was led by the governor and passed by the legislature in February of 2011. We um, are very appreciative and very grateful that the uh, legislature and the governor have made a significant investment in economic development, and it is an investment. Uh, basically, what we're seeing now is we're able to compete for projects um, at a much more aggressive, in a much more aggressive way than we were in the past. I started with Commerce um, 17 years ago, and uh, the suite of tools that we had available to us you know, 17 years ago were minimal. Um, and over the years, we've been able to enhance those opportunities. Um, the governor and the legislature have decreased our corporate income tax by 30% just in that last package. Uh, they have reduced personal and uh, real property taxes as well. They have put programs in to reduce tax liability for businesses so businesses can take those dollars and reinvest them into their companies and create jobs for Arizona. So the dollars and the incentives really are an opportunity to create more jobs for Arizonans at the quality that we hope um, Arizonans can, can match. Time after time, survey after survey of CEOs, they say we need a good transportation system and we need a good trained workforce, which means a good educational system. How are we doing with those in Arizona? What story can you tell about those two important factors when you're out there trying to recruit businesses? Well, we, uh, I agree with you. Those are foundational uh, issues. Infrastructure, education are important factors to any site uh, location decision. And so when we work with business decision makers, we're communicating with them on the infrastructure uh, that's been put in place. Um, as it relates to infrastructure, we, compared to other states, are doing very, very well and um, are able to get folks in and out of, uh, or provide goods and services in and out of Arizona very quickly. Our airports are, um, are excellent. We've got excellent uh, flight to California and to other markets in the, in the country and internationally. So from an infrastructure standpoint, we're doing very well. On the education front, we are working very closely with educational leaders. Um, the uh, state universities are really producing world-class talent. They are graduating the best and brightest, and we are working with them to ensure that those that are graduating have jobs uh, to go to. So our focus is really to help to match those those folks that are graduating with the jobs of the future. In working with our universities, they have been just tremendous to work with. They are community, or they are economic engines for the state as well as our community colleges. So taking the community colleges, the universities, and the existing workforce that we have um, in the high tech area, we feel that we've got a great story to tell as, a, uh, as we talk to businesses. Michael Crow, the president of Arizona State University, estimates that the state is about 30,000 bachelor's degrees shy of where it needs to be to make the economy grow. What does that do when you're out there talking to high-tech businesses about coming to the state or expanding within the state? 
Well, there absolutely is a shortage in certain positions, and so certainly we are working with the educational community to ensure that uh, we have the, the supply needed uh, to meet the demand. Um, we do find that that is not just an issue here in Arizona, that it ultimately is across the country. Arizona is a great place to attract people to. So from that perspective, we've got a two-pronged approach. We're working with our educational leaders to ensure that we're graduating the talent that we need to ensure that our businesses have the talent pool they need, but also working with businesses in fact, if there is a shortage in ways in which they can bring new talent here to Arizona. Pretend you're making your pitch to a CEO to relocate to Arizona. What one thing do you want her or him to know about what to expect upon locating in Arizona? The one thing I would love, uh, that I would like to share with a business uh, decision maker is that Arizona has gone through a significant transformation. Arizona has, um, from the top, the, the governor, our political leadership, as well as our educational leaders, the business community, economic development, um, all working together towards a common goal, and that is to ensure that businesses are successful in our state. So our businesses, um, our community is completely committed to enhancing business opportunities through a variety of different ways, ensuring that we've got a low tax and regulatory environment, we've got a highly skilled workforce, and an exceptional quality of life. And we believe that's a recipe for success. With all the attention on economic development, a single word describes how businesses feel, optimistic. Glenn Hammer, President and CEO of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry, tells me why. What are you hearing from the Chamber's membership about the business atmosphere in the state right now? It's all positive. Uh, there, there's a lot of optimism as to where the state is going. There's a sense that things are steadily improving. We see that with, with the jobs reports. We're, we're increasing jobs. Uh, there's just also uh, a sense that the state has made a conscious decision to make itself far more business friendly than it had been in the past. So the, 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 the sense when we, we have a approximately 100 person board, we go around that table, uh, there's a lot of optimism in terms of where the state is going. What would you say the key strengths are in the Arizona economy right now? What are the strong areas? Well, there's, there's a number of areas where we're, we're, we're seeing uh, growth. Uh, we've, we've created a, a number of policies here that have really improved our export-oriented industries, uh, our, our manufacturing sector. Uh, we've had a number of good announcements over the past uh, several years for, for blue-chip companies like, like Intel. Uh, we've got a great healthcare sector in this state, some of the best uh, hospitals and medical uh, institutions. Our, our travel and tourism sector, a very important uh, slice of the Arizona economy, is, 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 doing, is doing better as well. So really, uh, all the different sectors of Arizona's economy are improving, and, and our construction and our housing uh, markets are also uh, moving in the right direction. Any areas that are causing you or membership in the chamber worry? Sectors that perhaps aren't performing the way they would hope to be? I would say that all the sectors are, are essentially moving in the right direction, but there is some nervousness on some of the things going on at the federal level. Uh, sequestration, for example. Uh, you know, Arizona is a top, easily a top 10 state, top five by some metrics in terms of defense contracts when it comes to defense and aerospace. The way the sequestration uh, uh, is set up on the federal level, it has a disproportionate hit to the defense industry. So there is a concern of the effect that that could have on the, on the state's economy. But, but so far, that uh, does not seem to be a, a terribly deep hit, but we have to stay tuned. One of the things that, that, that's very important uh, is that uh, through the leadership of the Arizona Commerce Authority, the state has really gone all in to be one of the test sites for something called un unmanned aerial vehicles. These are really next generation aircraft. We're lucky that we have the F-35 that's going to be going uh, to, to Luke, but there's a lot of thinking that the next generation aircraft that the military is going to be using will essentially be unmanned, very, uh, unmanned vehicles. 
we want to be one of the top six test sites. And if we're able to accomplish that, which I believe we will, uh, that should lead to a whole bunch of, of new manufacturing and job opportunities for the state of Arizona. You mentioned business friendliness and that the state is getting more friendly when it comes to attracting businesses. There was some news this week about that. Would you tell us about that first? And then what is the impact of that uh, from a marketing and public relations point of view? Well, we, we had great news uh, earlier this week. You know, the, About the same time the announcement came out that GoDaddy was going to uh, ramp up its it's hiring in the state of Arizona and, and invest in, in, in some new infrastructure. A report came out from Chief Executive Magazine, uh, and these are 700 leading CEOs from across the United States, uh, now ranking Arizona as the sixth best state in the country to do business. This is, this is, a, this is an improvement from the number 10 slot last year, which was a pretty significant improvement from the year before. So, so basically what's going on is that chief, chief executives from across the country look at Arizona as one of the most favorable and most desirable states to do business. That's a sea change, and, and we're very excited about uh, all the additional opportunities that that new ranking should bring to our state. How do you leverage that? Is it used in marketing? Is it used in pitches to companies yeah. to bring them to the state? Well, I, th this is one where you know, I'm sure our economic development organizations led by the Arizona Commerce Authority won't be shy to say that we're making, we, we've probably made more progress than any other state in terms of our ranking over the last couple of years. Do you think that there's more government help needed at the state level to make Arizona even more business friendly? We, and what we, would that be? Well, we, we can never stop. It, this, the, you know, one of the interesting things about the Chief Executive Magazine report, they've been doing this about for the last nine years. Here are the constants. California has been number 50 the last nine years. Texas has been number one. But outside of those two states, there's been a lot of a decent amount of movement. So in terms of things that we, that we could continue to do, we still certainly have work to do on our educational system. And it's one of the reasons why, even though we have some of the best schools in the country, uh, too many kids are still dropping out of school. Our standards uh, could still be improved. So one of the things the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry is doing is we're putting a lot of effort in making sure that the new Arizona Common Core standards, these are standards that 46 other states have adopted to make sure kids are college and career ready, are adequate, adequately implemented. And we need to make sure that our outstanding universities, public and private, have the resources they need to, to achieve. Full versions of all of tonight's interviews are at azweek.com. That's our program for Friday, May 10th, 2013. For Arizona Week, I'm Michael Chiha. Production of Arizona Week is made possible in parts by a grant from the Stonewall Foundation and by the members of Arizona Public Media. Thank you for your continued support.